Jethro the Gileadite was a mighty warrior. His father was a Gilead. His mother was the prostitute. Gilead's wife also bore him sons. And when they were growing up, they drove Jethro away. You are going to get in, you're not going to get any inheritance from our family, they said, because you are the son of another woman. So Jethro fled from his brothers and settled in the land of Tob, where a gang of scoundrels gathered around him and followed him. Some time later, when the Amorites were fighting against Israel, the, el the elders of Gilead came and went to Jethro from the land of Tob. Come, they said, be our commander, and we can fight the Amorites. Jethro said unto him, Did you hate me and drive me from my father's house? Why do you come to me now when you're in trouble? The elders of Gilead said to him, Nevertheless, we are turning to you now. Come with us to fight the Amorites, and you will be heard. You'll be head over all of us who are in Gilead. Jethro answered, Suppose you take me back to fight the Amorites, and the Lord give them to me. Will I really be your head? The elders of Gilead replied, The Lord is our witness. We will certainly do as you say. So Jethro went with the elders of Gilead, and with the people made him head, and commander over them, and he reported, he reported in all of his words, repeated all of his words before the Lord in Mesfa. You may be seated. Heavenly Father, we praise you and thank you for this 445. Lord, this is your service. This is the service that you have given to us for this day. Lord, this preacher can only preach what you give me. I've got nothing of myself. Nobody here come to hear me to say anything, Lord. Only what you have to say, Father. We pray that you would work mightily and bountifully. We pray that the Holy Spirit of God would flow up down the pews of this chapel, that you would have your way with every man here. We bind every work of Satan in the name of Jesus. We bind every work of the underground devils of hell, Lord God. We bind them in the name of Jesus. And we just ask you, Lord, that you would reign supremely here today in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. I went to Judges chapter 11 and did some studying in here on a couple of daily devotions that I wrote. But this man of Jethro was, was a man that I thought many of us could relate to. Uh, Jethro was a man that you would say was born on the wrong side of the tracks. He was born, uh, his mom was a prostitute. His mom was the prostitute and his dad that he had was married. And so he was an illegitimate child. Uh, when Israel got into the promised land because he was born to a prostitute, he was probably born out in the desert. Wasn't with the rest of society. And looking to, for some comfort, looking for some family that he could latch onto to support him and to help him. His fathers disowned him. His brothers disowned him. His half-brothers disowned him because he was an illegitimate child. They didn't want to have nothing to do with him because they weren't really his brother. And, they, and the father disowned him because he came out of a prostitution. And the prostitute herself couldn't do much for him herself because that was her way of living. And so the man grew up with absolutely nothing. He didn't have nowhere to turn to, nobody wanted him. And here he is, a teenage boy, trying to find himself, trying to find somewhere to live, trying to make a living doing something. And so as the story goes on, it's common day, even though this is an Old Testament story, he gathers himself with a gang because the gang accepts him for who he is. And so he gets with the gang and the gang thinks he's just fine and here he is. A man with so much potential, a man born a human being, but yet because of his status in life, people overlook him for everything. He wasn't accepted by the status quo because of his status situation. 
He was overlooked by many because of how he was born. Am I, am I making sense to anybody right now? Because of how he was born, because of his circumstance, society looked out upon him and thought less of him. And, and you see, there are people who will do that because of how you dressed, how you look, the way you came from, everything that you got, everything you don't got, that's how they're going to judge you. And they look at you like you ain't going to amount to nothing. Because you're born out in the wilderness. Because you were born out of a prostitute. You got folk that won't even give you a chance because that's just the way you were born. You got people that don't even want to help you because they look at you and they say, well, I don't want to get involved in that man's life. Well, I, I'm sorry that this is the way you were born. I'm sorry this is the status that it came to. But my Bible tells me that the Lord still loves you. The Lord still hasn't given up on you. And as long as you got breath in your lungs, he's not through with you yet. Amen. Well, well. And so Jethro grows up. He's got a gang that he has a gang. And, and, and people look at him and maybe, maybe he's not worth giving the gospel to because he, he doesn't look like he's ready for it. Uh, maybe he's not going to uh, need some schooling because there's nothing we can do for him. Maybe he shouldn't be uh, allowed to do certain things because of where he came from. I, I'm sorry, but this man was a very intelligent man. The man was a very smart man. All he needed was a chance. And you think society is any different back in Israel's days than it is today. <laughs> it hasn't changed one iota, has it, gentlemen? You know, there are, there are men in this place right now. You're a whole lot smarter than I am. You're a whole lot smarter. You can do things that I can't even imagine. Because that's just the way God's gifted you. That's the way he's wired you. And because, and because of that status, that's the way people look. That's the way people judge. That's the way things are in this world. But God says, no. God sends the elders to him. And the elders come to him because they realize he's robbing, he's stealing, he's a thief. And, and, and they realize, you know, this guy, does, this guy knows what he's doing. And not only does he know what he's doing with his group of thugs, that he's got his game that he's got, he knows how, he knows how to maneuver a war, he knows how to strategize in a war. And the guy's not all that bad after all. You know, it's amazing to me, and it's always been amazing to me ever since I was born again, and I started to serve the Lord, it's always been amazing to me how people think because of where you live, what your address is, or where you're demographically located, that all of a sudden you can't do this, that, or the other. But you know what? It's amazing what happens when all of a sudden you put nice clothes on, you go somewhere, and you go for a job, and all of a sudden people are looking at you like, oh yeah, we ought to hire so-and-so because of how they look. You know, it, it, it's always been amazing to me. It, it's because you do have the intelligence. You do have the smarts. It's just that you need someone to give you a chance. It, it's just because you need someone to come up to you. And, and it's amazing to me. It's always been amazing to me how anyone in this room at any given time, God can use for the praise of his glory. Amen. Jethro was such a man that God used. His predecessor, Emelech, before this, born out of a handmaid, God used him as a judge over Israel. Yeah. Jethro, born the way he was born, he made it to be a judge over Israel. 
And that is because, gentlemen, and this, it is because of this fact, and it is why I love coming down to preach at the rescue mission. It's why I love being here. It's because it doesn't matter what society says. It doesn't matter what society thinks. It only matters what God thinks. And because God thinks that you're a human being, because God says you have potential, it doesn't matter that you're here at the Milwaukee Rescue Mission now. It all depends on the future what God has for you. Who knows? Who knows what God can do with any man in this room right now? If he could use a man who was in a gang, a man born of a prostitute, his dad an adulterer, lived by himself, grew up with gang. If he, God could take somebody like that if God could take a man like that and make him a judge over Israel, think how much more he could do with you or me, with us. Amen. You know, when, when, I, when I got saved, when, when I got saved, people said, you know, you're never going to make it as a preacher because, you know, preachers are supposed to look really good and they're supposed to be young and handsome and they're, they're supposed to be able to use both of their arms and both of their legs. They're supposed to be able to be able to sing and maybe play piano or something like that. And, uh, and all I had was the preaching part. And, and But God said, no, I, you're going to be a preacher. I said, are you sure I can stand in front of people the way, I, the way I was physically made it? And God says, yeah, you can. And so here I am. It didn't matter to me. You know, so I'm in the same boat. You know, Jethro knew what it was like, but I knew what it was like. I knew what it was like having a group of people to tell you, you know, just be happy that God saved you and just leave it at that. But I said, no, God's got so much more. And God could take you and God could take your heart. And God could make you into something like a Jethro who could come and, 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 and to be used for him with the praise of your glory. No, Jethro wasn't perfect. And you read on, he was a man of faith. He, they talk about him in Hebrews 11 in the faith chapter. He had a great faith. He believed when God grabbed a hold of him and God saved him and God put him in charge of Israel. He had a great faith, but he wasn't perfect. He made some vows that you and I would have never would have made. In fact, he made a vow that said, you know, the first, God, if you give me the Amorites into my hands, I'll give you the first thing that I see when I walk through the door of my house. And the first thing he saw when he walked through the door of his house was his daughter. So he wasn't a perfect man by no means, but God knew that he wasn't perfect, but God wasn't looking for a perfect man because only Jesus Christ is perfect. He was looking for a man that he could use for the praise of his glory. And see, what made Jethro was so good was it wasn't what Jethro was. It wasn't what Jethro brought to the table. It wasn't the character of Jethro. It wasn't who he was. It wasn't what he was able to do. It was what God was able to do through a man that was surrendered and was willing to be used by him. That's the difference. It didn't matter what Jethro did. It didn't matter who he was. It, it, it mattered who Christ was. And Christ says, I'm going to take this man. I'm going to use him. And, and I, I, why I, I come down here and I say all the time, in the years that I've been coming down here, now going on to eight years, I, I say to, I say to the, the people all the time, I says, you don't know what God can do with you if you surrender your life to him and allow him to use you. Because I read all the time where God has done these things to people and they were no different from you and I. Just there wasn't any different than you and I, man. Was he any different than you and I? He put his socks on it the same way you and I did. He wasn't a mighty man that was, was uh, uh, far away from being human. He was the same man that you and I were. He had the same positives and negatives. He had the same attributes that we would have just living in a different time. But God grabbed him and used him for the praise of his glory. 
And God could do that with you. God could take you when you surrender your life and you say, can God do anything with me? Just cry out to the Lord and say, Lord, can you do anything with me? And God will say, yes, I can. God can use you. God can, if God could use this man in all of his difficulties. And you'll arise to the top, the cream of the crop, and, and people will forget all about your past. They'll forget all about how you got to the top, and they just know that you're on top and you're the man. Because when Jethro got to the top, he started to rule over Israel. He started to win the war in the Amorites, and he started winning the wars. They forgot all his past. They forgot where he came from. They forgot his roots. They forgot all of the trouble that he caused being a, a burglar and a robber and, and, and the things he did with his gang. They forgot all about that stuff. Amazing how that works out. And because God can use every single man in his place, God hasn't given up on you. Because God has given you a soul that he preciously considers in his Thinking of sending people down here to preach, you're worth it. You're worth every single person that comes down here. Amen? You're worth it. Because God doesn't look at you the same way people look at you. God says in Isaiah 33, my thoughts are not your thoughts as far as high as that I could see. My ways are not your ways, nor my thoughts your thoughts, he says. They're not the same. You can't, you don't know. You see, society looks at you on the outward, but God looks at the inward. Society looks at what you have on the outside for ability. God looks at the inside of you. He looks at your heart. He can see the potential that you have and what you're able to bring to society and what you're able to do for the kingdom of God. And yes, maybe society will say one thing about you, but it doesn't matter to me personally because all I'm concerned about is what God thinks of me. And what God thinks of me is going to matter when I'm standing before him and then he said, why Mike, why should I let you into my kingdom? Uh, Lord, I've trusted in your works. I've trusted in your blood. I've trusted in Jesus Christ on the cross and I've done what you called me to do. I didn't do my own thing. I, I didn't come there. And so that's where Jethro was as a man used for the kingdom, used in the wars, and he made it through, and he was able to be used by God for a great and mighty work. And there are men in this room that are the next Jethro's. There's somebody in this room that's going to be the next Jethro. Somebody is. And you know what? I look at you differently because I see the potential, and someday... Someday, you know, I, I, I look at it this way. I preach, I preach the word of God, and, and I look up this way. But I've had many men through the course of the years that I've been here have been a tremendous blessing to me personally. It ain't a one-way street with me preaching. It's always been two-way because I've had men come up to me and tell me things and, and, and help me with things. It's been a two-way street. And, and I look... And I look at you and I look at what God can do. And I look at how big our God is. And you can't put God in a box. You can't say that this is all God can do. This is all the farther God's taken me is the rescue mission. No, look at this as a stepping stone for where God has you. From the, from the praise to glory, this is where he started you out from, maybe. But this isn't your final destiny. As long as you've got breath in your lungs, God can use you. Don't give up on God. Don't say that God can't use you. If you're breathing and you're here today, God can use you. He can use you. Oh, it's, it's just preaching. I've just been flashing back 20 years now preaching the word of God. And I just look back and I just think of all the times when people said, you're a preacher. 
wow, you really do that? It's like, God, God says I can't. <laughs> and it's not because I won't have any big mega church, never. I'll never have any big denominational thing. I'll never be able to do those big and high and lofty things that the people that are well learned and gone to college and learned a whole lot of stuff about a whole lot of things. No, I'm just your meat and potatoes type preacher. I meet people where they're at. I keep it real. And that's all I know how to do, gentlemen. You know, I, I don't come down here with no song and dance. I don't come down here to put some show on for you. I'm no good at any of those things. I can promise you that. But I do know what the Word of God says, and I know what the Word of God tells me to say, and I know what the Word of God is telling me in this chapter. He's telling me that every soul is precious because you are made in the image of God. He said that every soul is precious because they're mine in Ezekiel chapter 18, verse 4. They are mine, says the Lord. And because you are made in the image of God, because you are wired a little differently, don't worry about that. We're all wired a little differently. We all got our own little corks. But can I be used for the glory of God? Yes, you can. Can I make a difference in the world? Yes, you can. Has God given up on me yet? No, he hasn't. No, he hasn't. You may be down in your luck. You may be thinking that you're hopeless. But God has given you this crazy preacher to come in today to tell you what I'm telling you right now. And that's the honest to God truth. And that's really all I know. That's all I know. I know that I serve a God who's great in mercy. I know I serve a God who's great in love. And I know that there, I'm looking for a God who takes the common people of the world and uses it for the praise of his glory. And every missionary that I've ever known that's made it big in this world has all been common people that just said, Lord, here I am. I'm surrendering my life to you. I have absolutely nothing to offer you, but I'm willing to do whatever you want me to do. Whatever your will is, just tell me what it is and I'll do it. That's all he's looking for because it's that surrendered life where the Holy Spirit can come within you and change you and transform you into what God wants to use you for. That's all he's looking for is the surrendered life. And if you give him that, no matter who you are in this room, no matter how intelligent you are, no matter how gifted you are, no matter what you think you possess for, for, for talent and what you don't, it don't matter because, come to, because when you come down to it all, it's all Christ. When I preach, it's all Christ. When I get to the end of the message, if anybody likes it, it's Christ. If anybody didn't like it, it's Christ. It isn't my message. It's not what I'm preaching. It's just what God's given me. It, so it's not me. It has nothing to do with me. And I praise God it don't. But God hasn't given up on you yet. God hasn't given up on you yet. He looks at every man here at the 445. He sees the potential. He sees your heart. And he says, listen, guys, I took a man that was born of a prostitute. I took a man that had an adulterous relationship as a father. I took a man that didn't have a family to, to, to stand by him, to support him, to love him, to nurture him, to care for him. I had took a man that had absolutely nothing, who was born on the other side of the tracks. And in many ways, I was born on the other side of the tracks. And maybe you too. But God says, I can use whoever it is. I can take anybody at any given time, any time in history, and make them for the praise of my glory. If they want, if they want, because that's just the kind of God that we serve. God's not a person who is there to judge you for who you are and what you have. He's not one of those kind of people that will only save certain kind of people and not save other kind of people. 
He's not caring about those things. He says, all who call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. He doesn't say that only those who don't go to the Milwaukee Rescue Mission can be saved. He doesn't say only certain people can be saved. He says, all those who call upon my name. And last I looked, you and I are all those people. Amen? Amen. He said, he said, all you have to do is call upon my name. That's all you have to do is repent, believe that he is the Lord. Repent and believe it and say, Lord, here I am. And there have been people that have given their life to the Lord that have been famous and they've come the other way. They, they, they were people that were famous. They had it all. They lost it all and they gave their life to the Lord and now they're just simple people but they had it all at one time and they're more happier now than they were when they had everything because now they have Jesus. Before they had absolutely nothing but misery. Amen. But Jethro is an example to us of someone that God knew had a talent. Knew had something he had offered to the people. He was doing something at a small scale by robbing people and doing the things he did. And then God said, all right, you proved that you know how to do these things at a small scale, although it was illegal. And now I'm going to put you on the big grand scale. You give your life to me and I will be able to help you. And he did. He had an incredible faith, like I said before. And God used him for the praise of his glory. And yes, he was able to accomplish great and mighty works. And he's listed in the book of Judges. And then when you look back at his predecessor, Amalek, and then before that, I preached on Gideon. Wasn't Gideon almost in the same boat this guy was in? Almost when I preached that here. These are all guys that had absolutely nothing. They were nothing, so then God turned around and used them. And don't think that God has done using people yet because he's still looking for the same people because God is the same yesterday, today, tomorrow. He doesn't change. Amen. He ain't looking for some prideful person that's got the GQ look, that's got the $1,400 suit coat and all the fancy stuff. He ain't looking for that man. Trust me, he ain't looking for that man. Man that's clubbing it, got babes hanging all over him and driving with the big old fancy car with the hydraulics, the big tires and all. He ain't looking for that. That's trouble. No, God's looking for something. He's, God's looking for a man that's bigger and better than that. Somebody that's better than that. And that's a man that says, I love Jesus. I'm going to live for him. And even when it don't look like it, I'm going to live for him. Even if it doesn't make sense to me, I'm going to do what he calls me to do. And even when all the cards are against me, even when I'm walking to the valley of the shadow of the death, I'm going to turn my eyes to him and I'm going to look to him and I'm going to ask him to help me to get me through. Because there's no situation you're in, gentlemen, that there ain't somebody before you that hasn't gone through it. There ain't nothing that you're ever going to go through that Christ can identify with, first, number one. But number two, somebody's been there, done that already, and in many times God has taken them. I look at a man by the name of Nicky Cruz, who Dave Wilkerson um, got a hold of in New York City. Dave Wilkerson was a famous pastor, uh, man that I, I deeply admired before he went to pass with the Lord. But he went to New York City, and he ran into Nicky Cruz, who was a drug addict and, and selling drugs, and he was the head of a gang, and, and Nicky Cruz uh, almost killed him when he was trying to preach him the gospel, almost killed him. But then one day when he was close to, Dave Wilkerson was close to death, if I remember the story right, Nicky Cruz got saved. And the Lord grabbed a hold of him, and Nicky Cruz, if you look on the internet, if you read about him, he tours around. He was just in Wisconsin not so long ago, but he tells you his experience. Uh, in fact, if you read the book, The Knife and the Switchblade, that's a book that was written about him that Dave Wilkerson wrote. But a man that was ahead of a game, killing people, robbing people, drug money. You know that whole thing in New York? God grabbed a hold of him. Now he's on fire for the Lord. And look where he was. You know what? If God wouldn't have grabbed hold of him, he would have died and he would have been a no-name in history. Nobody would have ever known who he was. He was just another guy that just died just doing what he always just did. And 
you reap what you sow. But because God grabbed a hold of him and God saved his soul, now he tours and he talks about the power of God and what God is able to do in a heart that's regenerated and how God changed his mind, his attitude, his thoughts, and everything about him that he no longer is a man that wishes to kill and wishes to do the things he did. But no, God transformed him. Now he's a man of God. He loves the Lord. And he says the power of God is able to transform a life. Amen. Amen? God is able. Gentlemen. God is able. If I leave you just with one, one thought before I, before I dismiss you out for prayer. God knew I'd be preaching this message, knew I'd be here today. I, I had other plans, and uh, I came because this message. And I knew when God gave this to me, I knew that I had to be here to preach this. I just knew it. And I. I, I preach this with all the love I have and, and because I just I guess I, I, I have to answer the question all the time am, am I worth saving? Am I worth God doing something in my life? Can God change my life? And I, and I keep on saying yes God is able to change your life and God is able to. The power of God is not short. It's not slack in the conversion of men. But God is able to with every heart that offers himself up to be able to change. And so I come today to encourage you in the things of God. I give you a real life story. Something that's factual. And I could give you millions and millions of examples of missionaries to support what I'm preaching here. But there's not enough time. Only to say this. That God has me here for a reason today, gentlemen. And it's because there's someone here that may have lost the fact that God loves them. There might be someone here that's given up hope that God is able to change them. There may be someone here that maybe has given up hope that society has, could help them. I don't know, but my answer is Jesus. My answer is salvation in the Lord. And the giving up yourself, considering yourself dead to Christ, and making yourself alive that he may work in you whatever it is that he has and I believe that there's someone in this room today that I've come down here to preach to that's going to answer that call I firmly believe with all my heart and I hope it's the whole place believe it or not and all I'm going to do is go home and praise God for the conversions I'm going to go home and praise God for what he's given me and I'm going to praise God for what he did in this service that he did the work that he changed the lives and that people came forward and they said I want to know Jesus that's all I get out of this is to put my smiley head on a pillow and say Jesus snagged this one from the fire let's pray let's bow our heads Heavenly Father, we praise you and thank you. We thank you, Lord God, for the example that you gave us today of Jethro and what you were able to do with him. We ask you, Lord God, knowing that this work that you did in him, you are wanting to do in this place right now with these men. And Father, I pray, Father, that you would strengthen them right now to come forward after service and receive you as Lord and Savior. I pray, Lord, that they would come forth and say, what must I do to be saved? I want to receive the free gift of salvation. I want to know this Jesus that you are talking about, and I want him to be my Lord and my Savior. I want him to rule my life, and I want him to change me from the inside out, and I want to be used like Jethro was. And I pray, Heavenly Father, that you would work mightily and bountifully here. I pray for every family that's represented here today. Father, I ask you that you would lead and guide every man here to be reconciled with their family. I pray, Heavenly Father, if there's anyone here that needs prayer, they can come up afterwards and I'll pray for them.